Hi guys, welcome to episode one of Hodge's new webinar series. Uh, so this episode is entitled Lending into Retirement and Introduction. My name is Wes Regis, I'm the National Account Manager for the North um, at Hodge and the plan for this presentation is really just to shed a little bit more light on the later life lending space, what does it all mean, what's it all about uh, and it's aimed very much at advisors who might not be super active in the later life lending arena at the moment uh, or are thinking about entering this space. So, so that's the plan today. Now we do have an agenda which is on your screen now. Um, these are the areas we're going to quickly run through. So I'm going to remind you all who Hodge are. We're then going to have a brief intro, look at the drivers, look at the evolution of the later life lending space. We're then going to look at the product categories that are available out there. So not the products themselves, but just the, the pigeonholes that the products get put into. Um, I've got some market stats, some information around the market itself, which we will whiz through very quickly because there's a fair bit of data there, uh, which I think is important to look at, but we haven't got the time today to really drill down into it. So I'll probably mention a couple of uh, observations on each, each of the pages and then we'll move on. Um, and then opportunity. Finally, before we wrap up, we'll just focus on where you can find business in the later life lending arena as well. OK, so moving on. About us. So who are Hodge? So I work for Hodge Mortgages. Hodge Mortgages are part of the Hodge Group. Um, we've got the bank, Hodge Bank, who do lots of different things, savings accounts, commercial lending, uh, residential mortgages, things like that. Um, we've also got a life company that offer equity release plans, annuities, um, and the group is uh, majority owned by the Hodge Foundation, which is a charity. So a lot of the profits that Hodge make um, actually go into good causes. And you can find out more about that by visiting our website. Uh, in terms of Hodge mortgages uh, and, the, and the Hodge lifetime, as some of, you, some of you might remember, side of things, we've been trading since the 60s. We were the first lender in the UK to offer an equity release plan. Uh, we were also the first lender in the UK to, to bring out a Rio plan back in 2016. So we're very much at the forefront of the later life lending space. Uh, we're known as an innovator. Uh, and when it comes to, to lending to people who are nearing retirement or who are in retirement, we're, we're in a pretty good spot in terms of our proposition. So that's who we are. Uh, moving on, introduction. So I thought, how could I introduce this first episode of our webinar series? Let's just keep it basic. Let's do exactly what a client would potentially do if they wanted to find out a little bit more about later life lending uh, and what it meant, what it actually means. So what I did, I jumped onto a well-known search engine and I input terms such as later life lending, retirement mortgages, equity release, and I just clicked enter just to see what the results were. And on your screen now, I'm not going to read them to you. You can read them yourself if you want to. But here are some of the results that came up on the first page uh, of, of that search criteria that I put in. Now, a lot of these statements that were appearing on the first page of the search engine um, aren't necessarily wrong, but to a similar degree, they're also not right. They're also not correct. So clients who are doing their own research when it comes to later life lending are going to start getting bits of information that aren't necessarily 100% accurate, um, which isn't great, but I suppose that's like everything in life. You can't always rely on what Google tells you. Um, so I thought where we'll start now is to try and define what later life lending act means. And in my head, I think that any loan taken where one of the borrowers is over 50, or if the term is going to take them beyond the age of 50, then in my head, they are a later life borrower. So that would include the normal stuff that, that you and I talk about day in, day out, such as standard mortgages, such as retirement interest only plans, such as equity release plans, or, or maybe even second charges, uh, if that's part of your business as well. So those are the areas you probably were expecting me to talk about today. Uh, but, you know, to the same degree, an unsecured loan, if you're over 50 looking to take out an unsecured loan, you're a later life borrower. If you're applying to your bank for an overdraft increase, you're a later life borrower. If you're going down to Sainsbury's and, you know, topping up the old credit card, uh, doing the weekly shop, technically you're a later life borrower because you're using a borrowing facility later in life. But the areas we're interested in um, is the secured borrowing side of the market. So when it comes to secured borrowing for a client that's over 50, generally speaking, they have a different 
situation, different set of circumstances and different things to consider when compared to your average first time buyer or your average 40 year old that's, that's uh, upsizing into that slightly bigger house because they've got another uh, child on the way. So your later life borrowers are um, a niche area uh, of advice as well. And I think one of the key things to remember when it comes to later life lending is that best advice is critical. The client circumstances, the amount of choice that's out there in terms of solutions, um, I genuinely believe that you need a good advisor who's qualified, who knows their stuff, who can help you out. And if it was me looking to borrow, the first thing I'd do is pick up the phone to, to no doubt some of the people that, that are dialed in on this webinar today to discuss my needs and discuss the solutions that are out there. And I think this is one of the areas of the mortgage market that you're not going to be able to automate. I think the later life lending space is always going to be an intermediary led segment of the mortgage market because you guys are so key and critical to delivering that good advice to the clients that are out there that need help. So uh, in, in terms of an introduction, I think that pretty much sums up what later life lending is and where you guys fit in. Drivers. So why has this area of the market been growing? Uh, none of this is rocket science. A lot of you are going to know a lot of this already, uh, but I've summarized the main drivers into two categories. I've got the relatively unexciting category where you're not exactly going to jump out of bed in the morning and say, yes, I need to remortgage my interest only mortgage. Um, so that's the top part. And then we've got the bottom part where I've put a little thumbs up um, because this is a little bit nicer, a little bit more exciting where you might actually be jumping out of bed and saying, do you know what? I want to help the kids get their foot on the ladder um, or I want to build that extension. So to go through them in order, the things that we're seeing driving this market at the moment, um, in the majority of cases, we're looking at remortgage type business. So this is clients that are reaching retirement, getting close to retirement, and they haven't cleared their mortgage. There's a good chance it's an interest only mortgage. And we'll look at some numbers on that in a sec. It might be that as well as remortgaging um, their current existing mortgage, the client wants to raise a bit more capital for debt consolidation or um, maybe even for lifestyle um, because they've got income and outgoing pressures as well. So those, those are some of the main drivers we see in the not very exciting category. In the slightly nicer category down the bottom, we've got things such as people working for longer, so they're earning for longer, and that changes your perception of debt and changes your perception of borrowing when you're still generating an earned income, I think. Um, people are living for longer as well. So average life expectancy in the UK is now 82. And if you're living for longer, then that may bring additional cash pressures. They may be good cash pressures uh, because you want to go on holiday uh, a little bit more uh, than you may have done a generation or two ago. Um, or it may be more challenging cash pressures such as long term care costs and things like that. Uh, family gifting. This is a big one. So bank and mum and dad. We'll look at some of, some of that later on um, and home improvements as well. That's another big part of the, um, the business that we see. So those are the nicer side of the drivers. So there's a combination of factors here that are really helping to fuel the later life lending space and, and keeping the inquiries coming in our direction. Uh, I said we'd look at the interest only side of things in a little bit more detail. So a lot of the cases that Hodge look at are remortgages for interest only mortgages. So these are historic mortgages that were taken out with high street lenders 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago, that are reaching the end of their term and the clients need to remortgage in order to uh, remain in that property because they've got no other viable repayment strategy. You can see on this uh, graph in front of us now that we are here in, in 2020. Um, and this year, the FCA feel that there's around about 10 billion pounds, approximately uh, 10 billion pounds worth of interest only mortgages maturing this year. And a lot of those clients are over the age of 50. But you can see where that goes over the next 10 years or so. There's a huge increase year on year in terms of the um, number of interest only mortgages and the value of the interest only mortgages that are maturing out there in the real world. So we expect to see the later life lending space continue to grow for quite a long period of time, mainly due to the interest only side of things and these mortgages hitting maturity and the clients needing a new solution. OK, so that's the interest only side. Um, evolution. So there's a lot of conceptions out there in the late life lending space. Um, some of these quotes that you're seeing appear on the screen at the moment um, I've heard from clients um, 
not that I talk to clients in advice capacity, but we do hear it in, in feedback and uh, surveys and things like that that we do. Um, and also I hear some of these from brokers as well. So these might be brokers and advisors that haven't really looked at the uh, later life learning space for some time. And some of these old legacy misconceptions still remain. So let's look at some of these and see if we can uh, put these misconceptions to bed. So one of the big ones is the assumption that you can't switch provider, you can't sell your house once you've got a later life mortgage, um, you can't pay it off or, or move early. But the fact of the matter is, is that you can actually potentially product transfer uh, later life mortgages or you can potentially remortgage to another lender. There may or may not be early repayment charges. You know, that depends on the product that was taken out originally. So that's something to obviously look at. Um, but there are some products out there that allow you, for instance, to sell the property and redeem the loan in full. Uh, without incurring any penalties whatsoever and Hodge have a feature that can help you with that as well uh, and also most later life lenders do allow porting so if the client's moving house they can take the loan with them as well um, next misconceptions there are large variable exit fees now there can be um, some of the later life mortgages such as the equity release plans may have variable early repayment charges that are linked to an index such as swap rates or such as gilts and it could mean that there's quite a chunky early repayment penalty. But by the same degree, it could also mean that there isn't one at all. Um, so don't assume that any later life borrower is going to have big, chunky early repayment charges because it, it, it could be one or the other scenario. Um, there are plans now. There are equity release plans as well as normal interest only type solutions that have fixed early repayment charges. So you don't necessarily have to have an onerous variable early repayment penalty linked to an index. You could have a normal fixed structure, a bit like a normal mortgage. Um, and again, there are features out there that can help clients avoid early repayment charges altogether. For instance, if they're downsizing or selling their property and moving out. Uh, so again, speak to us at Hodge if you want to know more about that. Um, the interest will roll up and compound. Uh, you can't make payments towards the loan. You can't service the interest. So a lot of these comments we'll hear in relation to equity release plans. Uh, again, the truth of the matter is, is that most later life mortgages do now offer the ability to make flexible overpayments. Uh, generally speaking, it's around about the 10% per annum mark. Uh, a lot of the solutions are actually normal, regular interest only mortgages as well. So the interest is actually taken monthly by direct debit. So there is no roll up on certain solutions. The ones that allow you to make overpayments could actually also allow you to reduce the capital. I actually saw a case very recently where the original loan was 140,000 and the client had been making overpayments. They'd come back to us for a further advance and the balance was actually 111 at the point of the uh, the further advance request. So they'd actually reduced the capital since taking the original loan. So that is very common uh, to see people taking advantage of flexible repayment options. And all of these features can help mitigate or avoid any roll up or any compounding if the client so wishes. Uh, so, for instance, at Hodge with our plans, our equity release plans, you have up to 12 payments a year that you can make on the equity release plans. Uh, up to 10 percent of the original loan balance from day one. So you can service the interest if you so wish. OK, next misconception could end up in negative equity. Now, in terms of the standard interest only mortgages that you tend to find in the later life sector, um, that is true. You, you could end up in negative equity. But the comment that I will make around that is it's no different to a normal mortgage. So the, there's no increase in risk. The risk level to the client in terms of negative equity is exactly the same when it comes to comparing a retirement interest only mortgage to a normal high street mortgage, for instance. Um, when it comes to equity release, it's a little bit different again. So a lot of the plans, the vast majority of the equity release plans out there have something called the no negative equity guarantee. And what that means is, is if the client has rolled up the interest during the life of the loan and maybe they've been hit with property value decreases as well at the same time. And that's resulted in the loan balance overtaking the, the property value. Um, then the no negative equity guarantee means that there'll be no residual bill to the estate when that equity release client passes away. So if the loan rolls up to 120,000, the property is only worth 100, client passes away, lender wants their money back, they're not going to be writing a bill out for the 20 grand difference to the estate. They will sell the property, they will take the proceeds of the sale, and that's it. That you know, both all parties then 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 part ways. Um, so 
with the normal mortgages, it's no different to a standard mortgage. The risk with the equity release, the risk of no negative equ uh, equity situation is actually removed with the no negative equity guarantee. OK, next misconception. It's expensive. Um, historically, potentially the rates when compared to normal mortgages, there was quite a big difference uh, in terms of equity release compared to normal high street mortgages. That gap over recent years has got an awful lot smaller as rates have generally come down. Um, last year in 2019, the average rate was 4.91% fixed for life for equity release plans. And that is the lowest we've ever seen. Um, our range, our later life mortgage range starts at 2.95% uh, annual equivalent rate on, and that's fixed for two years on um, our 50 plus plan. Uh, there's plenty of incentives out there at the moment across all the lenders that might include fee free options, cashback type uh, offerings, free valuations, free legal packages. So in terms of cost, it's never been cheaper to look at later life lending solutions at this exact moment in time. OK, next item on the agenda is the products. So we're just going to look at the general product areas here, more so than the nitty gritty criteria of the products. The three main areas where later life lending products tend to fall is either a, a mainstream mortgage. So this is just a normal mortgage, probably an interest only mortgage aimed at older borrowers for longer terms. So you'll be looking at taking the term beyond retirement. Um, we've then got the hybrid box. So this is mortgages such as the retirement interest only type mortgages. The reason we call them hybrid at Hodge is because they have features and characteristics of a normal mortgage. Uh, but they also have features and characteristics of an equity release plan as well. So they kind of sit in the middle, hence the hybrid name. And then you've got your, your more traditional roll up um, type plans, which aren't affordability assessed um, and that they sit in the equity release box. Now, at Hodge, we've given these products names and I'm not going to go through the Hodge criteria today, but this is just to give you an insight into the names of the products that sit in each of those categories. So our normal mortgage is called the 50 plus. Our hybrid products are the Rio, the retirement interest only and the retirement mortgage. So the names similar, but that's actually two different products. And then finally, we've got our lump sum and flexible lifetime roll up plans as well. So those are the names of the Hodge range. Looking at each of these boxes in a little bit more detail, so the mainstream mortgages that we find in the later life lending space tend to be interest only residential mortgages. So that means that they are affordability assessed. The client does need to evidence that they can afford to make the repayments every month. Um, what distinguishes these mortgages from what you'd get from a high street lender generally is the term, the length of the term. So, for instance, at Hodge, on our standard mainstream offering, our, our average um, term is around about 20 years, 15 to 20 years. But a lot of the clients are being onboarded in their mid 60s, uh, maybe even mid 70s and looking at 15, 20, 25 year terms. So it's the term that's the key difference when you compare mainstream later life mortgages to what you'd normally get from the high street. Um, they generally offer higher LTVs when compared to the likes of equity release type solutions. You do need a repayment strategy with the mainstream mortgage solutions. So that could be downsizing. That could be sale of another asset. Um, generally speaking, what we see at Hodge is downsizing being selected as the repayment strategy. So I expect that to be similar across the whole market. But most lenders will look at other viable repayment methods as well. Uh, and obviously with mainstream mortgages you don't need an equity release qualification in order to advise on those so we do see um, a lot of practices that don't necessarily uh, focus on things like equity release still do a little bit of business uh, with Hodge in terms of our mainstream proposition uh, moving on so we now are going to look at the hybrid uh, category and this is where the new kid on the block the retirement interest only mortgages sit so these tend to be interest only mortgages again, a little bit like the mainstream box. Again, they are affordability assessed. So the client needs to be able to evidence that they can pay that interest every month for the life of the loan. But that is the key thing. The life of the loan with a hybrid mortgage is very likely going to be a lifetime term. So that means that the lender is underwriting this mortgage on the assumption that the client will keep that mortgage for the rest of their life. That does involve extra stresses that does involve a couple of extra 
considerations when it comes to underwriting a RIO. Um, and that may mean that a RIO from an affordability point of view could be potentially quite a challenge, in which case you may then look at a normal mainstream mortgage solution, the ones we were just looking at, or you may instead look at an equity release type solution. So there could be a, an alternative path to go down if affordability on a hybrid product is tricky. Um, but do bear in mind that the, the hybrid type products do have a very unique underwriting model set behind them. Again, they tend to offer the higher LTVs when compared to equity release. So at the moment on the Hodge Rio, for instance, the LTV is 60% to give you a bit of a feel for it. Um, no repayment strategy is required. So on the hybrid products, it's assumed that the repayment strategy will be the sale of the security property when the client passes away or goes into long term care or maybe moves out or, or does whatever they do. Um, that life event will spark the repayment point uh, for the lender. Uh, and again, with the Rio plans, you don't need uh, the equity release qualification. They're classed as a normal mortgage uh, from a regulation point of view. Uh, moving on to equity release. So the equity release plans, nice, simple plans. There's no affordability assessment. At Hodge, they're available from age 55. The key consideration from an underwriting point of view when it comes to equity release products is the property. So the underwriters will be looking at the property. How easy will that property be to sell as and when the loan is repaid? So uh, the chances are the client has passed away or gone into long term care and the property is on the market. And that's going to be the repayment strategy for the lender. So the property risk is the is the key consideration when you're underwriting an equity release plan. If the property is quirky, you know, if it's got a thatched roof sat next to a chip shop or something like that, then um, certain lenders might have a view on, on that type of property. Uh, and if you've got any questions around property, um, you know, criteria, then obviously get in touch with Hodge and we can talk you through that. But that's the main consideration. The loan to values on the equity release plan are actually linked to the age of the client uh, and they can range from the mid teens at the younger end of the um, age spectrum. So around about the 55 year old uh, end. Um, up to you know the high 40s, the 50s, that kind of area uh, with certain lenders out there at the upper end of the age spectrum. So as you get closer to the 80s, 80 to 85, you're going to see the much, much higher LTVs. Um, and obviously, when it comes to equity release plans, you do need the, the relevant permissions, you need the relevant qualifications in order to advise on those types of plans. So if that's not something you've got at the moment and you want to find out more, let us know. OK. Market. So I've got some stats and some numbers around the actual later life lending market here to look at. Um, this is from UK Finance. I thought this was quite an interesting slide. It's showing you borrowers between the age of 55 and 65 on the left and borrowers between the age of 65 and 75 on the right. And the um, proportion of borrowers that are taking certain products. So the 55 to 65 year olds, you can see there's quite a big weighting to uh, normal standard mortgages. So not equity release plans. Only 7% of borrowers between 55 and 65 who have taken a mortgage took an equity release plan. All of the others were taking uh, normal mainstream type mortgage solutions. So that would be your um, your you know, 50 plus type mortgage or your Rio type mortgage. But then fast forward in time to borrowers between the age of 65 and 75. Interestingly, 47 percent of borrowers in that category um, were taking lifetime mortgages, equity release plans um, with the remainder, you know, the, the other half. Uh, taking normal mortgages, so your Rios, your 50 pluses, your standard high street type mortgage solutions. So I thought that was quite interesting to show how the split changes by age. And that does kind of mirror what we see at Hodge, uh, because we have a very strong proposition on the mainstream and hybrid side of the product range. So if I move on to the next slide, that actually brings that a bit more to life. So this is Hodge data. This is the whole of 2019 breaking down our completions by product. And you can see that 56% of our completions last year were actually the normal mainstream 50 plus mortgage. 24% um, of our completions were our hybrid Rio plan. So literally three quarters of all the completions we saw at Hodge in 2019 were interest only mortgages where the clients pay the interest every month by direct debit, um, much higher LTV, affordability assessed, what you'd normally class as a normal mortgage. Um, 
and only 15% of our completions in 2019 were actually uh, roll up type equity release plans. So I thought that was quite interesting. Uh, I mean, our proposition is heavily weighted to the mainstream and the hybrid type solutions. Um, but I think that's still quite telling that three quarters of all of our business came from that area. Um, so this slide is from UK Finance. They've recently released some stats around the later life lending space. And this shows the number of new residential mortgages taken out by the 55s and over since 2016. And it's broken down by quarter. And you can see the general trend is one of growth. In fact, quarter three, 2019, there was just over 20,000 normal residential mortgages uh, completed for clients that were over the age of 55. So again, this was just to paint that picture that there is a growing opportunity, uh, not only on the equity release side of the market, but also on the normal residential mortgage side of the market as well. Uh, this slide is internal Hodge data. This is breaking down the actual purpose of funds. So why clients were coming to you to then come to us uh, for the cash in the first place. And you can see that by far and away, the, uh, the main driver behind our own completions is a pound for pound remortgage. So a lot of that was interest only mortgages like we were talking about earlier. Um, but in second place, uh, surprisingly, it was actually purchased in 2019. So yeah, uh, one in five cases uh, was a purchase case for clients over the age of 50, which may surprise you. And then third in the, in the, in the race, is home improvements. And you'll see this with a lot of the late life lenders, especially the guys out there that offer equity release, a big chunk of their completions relate to home improvements uh, where people are wanting to stay in the family home, but maybe adapting it because they're getting a little bit older or um, putting that extension on that conservatory on that they always wanted. So those are the main three areas that we see. There's a little bit of debt consolidation going on as well. Um, there's a bit of bank and mum and dad family gifting. Uh, helping first time buyers get their foot on the ladder. Uh, and there's also a little bit of purchase of a second property. So we can look at that. The charge is placed on the residence, on the main residence, that's our security, but clients can apply to release funds to purchase another property. Okay, slide. Now this is what an average client looks like at Hodge. So average age, average LTV, and average loan size by product area, which again, I thought was quite interesting, just highlighting the differences that we're seeing um, in terms of loan size when it comes to a mainstream mortgage compared to loan size uh, when it comes to an equity release plan. So I thought you might find that information interesting as well. And finally, with the last couple of minutes, um, we're going to look at the opportunities that are presenting themselves. So there's a little bit of repetition here in terms of dialing into the drivers that we were talking about a few minutes ago. Uh, but these are the main areas where we see opportunity now in the COVID-19 scenario and going forward. So again, I've split it into two areas. So we've got the current situation with COVID-19 and, and that little graphic is, is meant to, to symbolize COVID-19. Um, and we've got the bottom category, which is probably more post COVID-19 opportunity, I would suggest. Hence my little picture of a syringe. So I'm very hopeful that there'll be a vaccine out there at some point in the very near future. Um, so yeah, going through them in order, we've kind of talked about interest only maturities to death here, but um, that is definitely the main area that's fueling our business, the pound for pound remortgage. Uh, that if you if you're going to take one thing away from this webinar, take that away, that there's a big opportunity there to help older borrowers over the age of 50 remortgage their interest only mortgage away from the high street to a lender that's going to offer them a much longer term and take them beyond retirement. Um, income and outgoings pressures. So again, this this form part of the drivers that we were looking at earlier. Um, so there are clients out there whose investments might not necessarily be performing as well as they were a month or two ago. They're looking at income supplementation, income replacement. Uh, it might be that they already have debts as well that they're, they're looking to service. Uh, and maybe struggling to service. So they're going to start looking at their main asset in their life, which is their home, as a way to, to leverage cash to help them get through. So giving them that cash flow support. Uh, so now moving down to the post COVID-19 situation, uh, family gifting. This is one of the main drivers that we just saw in the previous graph. So banker mum and dad helping the kids get their feet on the ladder. Um, th this is a big area. It's going to continue to grow. Uh, property prices without a big deposit for some first time buyers are just out of reach. If you're talking to that first time buyer 
and you're not asking them extra questions around where the deposits come from or are mum and dad helping you are the family helping you then you might be missing out on an opportunity to actually talk to mum and dad as well it could be that mum and dad are sat down the road talking to another mortgage advisor about how to release some equity out of their property uh, and finally as we saw in the previous graph there is an opportunity in the late life lending space around purchase um, speak to your local estate agents make sure they know how to get hold of you tell them that you're a specialist in helping older borrowers over the age of 50 who are looking to purchase you've got a lot of solutions available to you uh, and i'm pretty sure that you'll get inquiries off the back of those relationships as well so those are some of the main areas where we see opportunity in the later life lending space at the moment and if you need any more information around any of that let us know uh, so yeah thanks for listening this is the penultimate slide and this includes our lending support contact details. So if you need any more help uh, after the webinar today, feel free to get in touch. Give us a call on the 0800 number, drop us a line on the lending support email address that's on your screen at the moment and we will do our best to help out. Thank you so much for listening and um, that's just over 30 minutes according to my timer. Uh, hopefully next time you see me I'll have had a bit of a haircut and I'll look a bit more presentable uh, but I, I hope that was useful and please reach out to us if you'd like to know anything else and um, see you potentially in the future on another episode thanks guys